Good morning and happy Assumption Day. Today, the Catholic and Orthodox churches mark Assumption Day. You won't find it in the Book of Common Prayer, but it is marked in the calendar in the common worship materials simply as the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the Scottish Prayer Book of the Scottish Episcopal Church marks it as the falling asleep of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I'll tell you about this day later and why we should mark it. But I'll start with part of Psalm 45, one of the psalms appointed for today. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her. Those brought to be with her, led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory throughout all generations. Therefore the nations will praise you for ever and ever. As I mentioned earlier, today's feast day goes by a variety of names, most commonly the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the Feast of the Assumption. The Orthodox Church refers to it as the Dormition of the Holy Mother of God, a reference to falling asleep of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Scottish Prayer Book is of course simply a more common term for Dormition. Although the feast has been celebrated since the 4th century, the Assumption only became part of the dogma of the Roman Catholic Church as recently as 1950, when Pope Pius XII declared, We proclaim and define it to be dogma revealed by God, that the Immaculate Mother of God, Mary ever Virgin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up, body and soul, into the glory of heaven. So why do we celebrate the Assumption on the 15th of August? Well, like the date of Christmas, it has pagan origins. For centuries, celebrations were held in honour of the goddess Isis of the sea, who was born on this day according to mythology. With the coming of Christianity, church leaders decided the easiest way to handle this pagan celebration was to simply change it into a Christian holiday. I find it interesting that the Catholic, in the Catholic Church the Assumption is dogmatically defined, in other words, nailed down, whilst in the Eastern Orthodox tradition the Dormition is defined liturgically and mystically. The Catholic Church likes to have its beliefs defined, whilst in Eastern Orthodox many doctrines are less authoritative and left as holy mysteries. I prefer the Orthodox approach, but maybe that's because I first became aware of the feast day in 1977. I was in Crete on my first visit to the Mediterranean during a Greek heat wave, which meant it was very hot, even for Greece. It was a public holiday, and we took a bus up into the hills to visit the village of Anogia, which had a local celebration. If you've been to Greece, you'll know just how chaotic public transport can be. It wasn't at all clear from the bus timetable exactly where the bus stopped in Anogia, and as there were two roads out, we decided to walk up to the junction so that we were covered either way. It was a baking hot day, and there were vultures circling, yes, literally. But what I will never forget is the elderly Greek lady, dressed in the traditional black, passing us by the roadside on her way down to the village with the loaves she had baked for the festival. She stopped, broke bread and shared her best loaf with us. I'm just so pleased that I had enough Greek to thank her profusely. The modern Greek for thanks is Ephkaristo or Eucharisto in first century Greek and we remember that every time we break bread together at the Eucharist. Amen. And now let us pray. First of all, the collect for today from Common Worship. 
Almighty God, who looked upon the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary and chose her to be the mother of your Son, grant that we who were redeemed by his blood may share with her in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine using a prayer by the Bishop of Oxford. <clears throat> God of compassion, have mercy this day on the people of Ukraine. Restore to them the gift of peace. Grant wisdom to the governments of the world. Bring good in the midst of evil and suffering. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, who gave his life to bring peace to your world. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe, and remember that we have prayers for Ukraine this evening at six o'clock at Holy Trinity, including Ukrainian music, and that Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.